side. And here we go. Going into game one, we have the Mandibuzz going into a Skarmory. Two Flyers are on the field here. Both of these Pokemon are using Air Slash as their fast move. It looks like this Mandibuzz is going to gather some extra energy and maybe attempt to throw a foul play here. Yes, this is definitely a slightly favorable position for the Skarmory, resisting those Air Slashes because of that Steel subtyping. But these foul plays are going to hit quite decently hard for neutral, whereas these Sky Attacks or the Brave Bird can really threaten the Mandibuzz. Oh my goodness, and we see a switch out into the Reggie Steel. Now this foul play will still deal neutral damage, but the Reggie Steel allows that Skarmory to go back onto the player's bench with a lot of stored energy, and here comes Trevenant. Yes, Trevenant did not want to face that Skarmory, especially because it's a grass type, but it is in a good spot against this Reggie Steel and getting the Shadow Ball off before the Zap Cannon comes through to debuff the Trevenant. So much of Pokemon Go comes down to timing, and we do see that Shadow Ball be triggered and launched before the Zap Cannon because just like you mentioned, Caleb, this Zap Cannon will lower this Trevenant's attack stat. Yes, Eris is going to no shield this Trevenant here and is going to throw the Shadow Claws and hopefully farm it all the way down, having a lot of energy banked for that Skarmory or even the Metacham. Trevenant is a grass type and it did indeed farm quite a bit with those Shadow Claws, able to fast move down the Reggie Steel. And now we see the Skarmory come out. This is a reduced impact Shadow Ball, but it gets shielded anyway. Yes, Shadow Ball does hit quite hard still from Trevenant, and you can see Trevenant continuing to Shadow Claw, and this Skarmy is going to throw its first charge move. I'm getting some shades of Dancing Rob style play with the extra energy acquired on this Skarmory, just loading it up and preparing for whatever challenge it meets, and in comes a Reggie Steel! This is a tough matchup, we see the switch into the Metacham, and here comes Mandibuzz again. Yes, Eris having a lot of coverage in the back end to cover for that Metacham, both the Trevenant and the Mandibuzz. Buzz having a lot of play, but this Mana Buzz is not at full health, which means this Medicham might have some play against it. Mandibuzz is a flying and dark type Pokemon, meaning it is still taking some neutral damage from the counters, and Medicham striking here with an Ice Punch, and we get a No Shield on Ares' side. Yeah, so Ares very confident in the Mana Buzz's health here, and is able to continue dishing out these Air Slashes to chunk away at this Medicham. Does Ares spend the first shield, and Ares does and working up to another aerial ace. Throwing the Ice Punch, the first Protect Shield comes off the board here for Ares as he's looking to reach the aerial ace, and he absolutely does. This will KO the Fighting type Metacham, but the trainer decides to shield and protect from the attack. Yes, so this Metacham is very low on health at this point, unfortunately, and is going to throw these counters, but taking a lot of damage from the Air Slash and does get knocked out before it can finish off the Manda Buzz. And now we are in a precarious situation for this Skarmory a nearly full health Reggie Steel, and it's going to do quite the a bit. Two Steel types are on the field, but the Reggie Steel definitely gets the advantage in this matchup. Skarmory just unable to deal any form of super effective damage, and even though the Focus Blast here is neutral, it will do quite a bit, and Skarmory gets KO'd. Ares takes a 1-0 lead. Ares showing why they are at the top of the winner's bracket, never dropping a match in this entire tournament and off to a great start in grand finals one to zero. Ares is essentially running through the clouds right now, almost untouchable at every turn, but Frika is one of the most persistent and calculated battlers I think we've ever encountered, and he is not done yet. Yes, and that was a tough matchup for Frika, but I feel like Frika is gonna adjust here and make some changes going into game two. Let's see how these trainers respond because we've seen these matchups play out certain ways, maybe not always the way that we expect. One of our trainers is so confident. They have already locked in their team. I don't know, Caleb. Are you this confident at this stage? You know, even when I'm not confident, I just lock it in right away. <laughs> Sometimes overthinking does not help me here. But we do have game two going in for this matchup. We have a Trevenant into a Sabot. This is much more favorable for Freka here. And let's see how Ares responds. Oh, and we see the instant swap into the Mandibuzz, and it's answered by Azumarill. It looks like the early advantage goes to Freka as he has alignment just where he wants it. Yes, Azumarill with two different super effective moves on 
deck here and but this mana buzz does have neutral air slashes and aerial aces which will start chipping away and adding up against this Azumarill. The air slash and the aerial ace do get same type attack bonus because mana buzz is a flying type but generally the Azumarill has such great stats that it doesn't really mind these charge attacks. Yes and Freyka building up a lot of energy be before deciding to throw any of the charge moves and is now going to throw that first ice beam. We do see the ice beam come off here. Now, Caleb, I'm curious, would you have thrown a play rough or are you content going with double ice beams? Yeah, and so this might be a calculation from Freyka, understanding that maybe he may need two ice beams or two play roughs, so might as well throw the move with a little bit less energy or it doesn't knock out this mana buzz and they can farm a little bit more energy as well off the mana buzz. Mana buzz doesn't quite get KO'd and it gets one more aerial ace. A lot of the times these trainers will let these charge moves come through to reduce their HP and not give their opponent an opportunity to gain too much energy. I think that might have been the plan with this Azumarill. Yes. Now this Trevenant doesn't have a great matchup against Sabwai, but with the energy lead, it is a different story. So it is probably going to start building some energy in the act. Ares actually letting this Ice Beam go through. This is going to do a lot of damage. It is super effective. And Ares maintaining that shield. And now comes in Galarian Stunfisk into the Sableye. Oh my goodness. It looks like the Ground Steel type Galarian Stunfisk is building up to the Earthquake. Decides to throw the move. But the Sableye is going to strike first with a foul play. Does Ares go for the bait with the Rock Side or just go straight for the Earthquake? It's a big decision to make. Freka feeling confident here and deciding... Not to shield. Oh no! Oh, a last second shield! I was baited as well in Franka's decisions here, but that's a big shield, and now this Galarian Stunfisk is in a much more favorable position. This is a charge move priority event. Both of these Pokemon reach their charge attacks at the same moment, and Sableye will get to go first. It does use the foul play, a bit of mutual latency here, as this charge move is going to come through, and it does! Stunfisk loses some HP there, but it's going to strike back with a move. Yes, let's see if Freyka spends both shields on this Sableye or decides to let it go and does correctly shield this Earthquake the second time around. Now the Sableye has a decent amount of energy and now coming in with the Trevenant here, Sableye is forced to throw the foul play before the Trevenant throws any energy. This is such a heads up play. Oh, try to grab a shield, but the Trevenant gets fainted instead, opting to save that protect shield for the Galarian Stunfisk. Yes, this Galarian Stunfisk is has his back against the wall. All three Pokemon on Freyka's side are still doing well, still healthy, and have a decent amount of play. We haven't even seen the Registeel on the field yet. And I just want to talk about the layer of strategy that that implies. If only two Pokemon are revealed, Ares is not aware of what is in the back. Here comes the Earthquake, and it's enough. Sableye gets KO'd. Come in here now with the Azumarill. It looks like Freyka going for that strategy, trying to feint out the Galarian Stumpfist before showing their third Pokemon. That it could be some interesting strategies and Freyka may bring the same line to surprise Eris in game three. There is a word on my mind and that word is grit. We are seeing the grit that Freyka has in every single game. The approach stays the same. Trying to find win conditions and just continuing to apply pressure and try to find those openings that lead to a victory. Yes, Freyka definitely has their work cut out for them, needing to win in this best of five to reset the bracket and win another best of five. But if anyone can do it, Freyka can. Battling through a gauntlet of trainers, battling through the loser's bracket as well, and facing Ares again on the big final stage. You couldn't be more correct. It does appear that Freyka does have a long road ahead of them. That was just one win. In order to secure this entire series, Freyka needs at least five more victories over Ares. But look, if you've done it once, you can do it again. Absolutely. We got Ares here, also very composed. Haven't lost a single set in this entire tournament and not looking to lose one in the grand finals. And let's see what happens here. Both trainers are locking in their teams. We are on to game three. Score is one to one. We have our lead situation on the field. The famous Trevenant versus Walrein, but on opposing sides. Yes, this Walrein is going to have a great time with the super effective Powder Snows, but the Sea Bombs are also super effective. So you do have to watch out for the Trevenant still. It looks like the Trevenant is going to act first, throwing this charge move. It does deal some super effective damage to Walrein, but Walrein is ready to strike back, and it does! But a, a switch and a catch, Reggie Steel is going to deal resisted damage here. 
What an incredible catch there. You see Ares actually over farming, building past the Icicle Spear, expecting potentially a catch, and Freka still catches it on the Registeel. What incredible timing. Sometimes you just get that sixth sense, that awareness of when your opponent likes to make a play, especially if you've played them before, which again, these trainers have faced off, and Ares was the victor. Shadow Ball comes through, this time before the Zap Cannon, and we see it does significantly more damage. Yes, and this is still a great spot for Ares to be in, able to align the Trevenant against the Registeel, which is usually favorable for that Trevenant, especially if you drop that charge move before getting debuffed. And we do see the Trevenant continuing to fast move. And look at this, actually in favor of the Zap Cannon, is going to shield the charge attack from Reggie Steel and then probably Shadow Claw the rest of the way. Yeah, there's a lot of energy on the Trevenant, but it also is debuffed twice on its attack, so its, dam its charge moves are not going to do nearly as much damage. And here comes Freka bringing in the Skarmory, understanding that this is only neutral, whereas bringing in their Trevenant would have been super effective. And this is critical too, manipulating those switch timers. They both expire for both trainers, but coming into the Skarmory versus Trevenant matchup early because you don't want that Trevenant to have an opportunity to switch out. Yes, Ares forced to throw two debuffed Shadow Balls here, but the Skarmory is still taking a decent amount of damage and is able to finish off the Trevenant. Not a lot of health remaining on the Skarmory. And here comes the Trevenant, and oh no, we saw this matchup in Game 5 of Winners, and now we see again in Game 3 of Grand Finals, Mandibuzz, one of the hardest wall to Trevenants, resisting every one of Trevenants' moves that he could throw at this Mana Bus, and this Mana Bus is going to have a great time farming this all the way down. One word comes to mind, and it is from the incredible game of chess. That word is check mate. Mandibuzz is going to have a very, very easy time versus this Trevenant as the final Air Slash does secure the KO, and it would appear that the final Pokemon comes out, Skarmory. It's got two shields, Caleb, but it has so much ground to make up. Yeah, you said it best. It does look like checkmate, but we do still have two shields here. Can Freka make magic happen? Let's see here. Still fighting to the bitter end here and does get hit with another foul play, drawing both shields in these last few seconds of the match. The foul play does get shielded like you mentioned, Caleb, and this Skarmory has a lot of banked energy. It's going to be interesting because it needs to grab a shield here and it does not. My goodness, the confidence from Ares. He says, bring it on, and it's a sky attack. Yes, and you know, look at the grit from Freka again, despite having his back against the wall, still fighting to the very end here and trying to gather as much info as possible for how he may adjust for game number four. Exactly. This is not a one-off battle. This is a test of endurance, a marathon, as both of these trainers continue to feel each other out, and a one-point advantage is not that significant at this juncture. I think that Frika needs to find a way to bring this series back and tie things up and give himself an opportunity to win. This is an absolutely crucial battle coming up. Ares with a win here would secure the Grand Finals and the first place finish at the Europe International Championships. Freka as well, a loss here would mean a second place finish. Still nothing to scoff at, but Freka probably hoping to climb back in, going 2-0 to zero to reset the bracket. As a reminder, a victory here at the EUIC leads to an invitation at Worlds in London coming up in just a few months. That is the premier event for Pokemon Go PvP, the beginning of what is sure to be one of the staples of Play Pokemon events going forward. Definitely, and if you think about this event, a lot of hype, a lot of excitement, both in person and online, and this is just one of the first to be live streamed for Play Pokemon. I can't even imagine how Worlds is going to look, but it's going to have the best of best, and one of these competitors will definitely be there. To piggyback off of your point, Caleb, it does appear that there are more regional tournaments coming, and what that means for the viewers is that even if you can't attend, you can follow storylines just like the ones we're seeing today, because those victors will meet in Worlds, and seeing these battlers battle their way to that stage is a reward in itself. Yes. For those watching, let's hear your support. Either you're a fan of Ares here or Freka, they need your support here in this very crucial game number four of this best of five. 
Absolutely. Let's hear it from the crowd. Let's see it from the chat on twitch.tv slash Pokemon Go. Let's hear it in the YouTube stream as well. We need to see some energy. Let's get excited for what could be, as you mentioned, Caleb, the decisive game of this entire weekend. Yes, definitely. And if you think about this, there's not a lot of people in the world that get to sit in this seat getting to play a very final game in the grand finals that's a ton of pressure but it also takes a lot of practice and clutch performances just to get to this very part in the match again one of these trainers is under significantly more pressure than the other because a reverse of this of the odds of this event means that there would be a bracket reset right so one of these trainers has actually already locked in their team. Talk about confidence, Caleb. They are ready to battle. Yes, and that looks like it is Ares here, you know, being up 2-1 to one in this Grand Finals. Also on the winning side, you got to be feeling pretty good, but also still have to be in tip-top shape for this next game. Let's get underway. Let's hear it in the arena. We have our lead scenarios on the field. What do we have? We have ourselves a Manda Buzz into a Metacham, a great spot for Ares to be in. And let's see how Freka is going to respond. We do have a Sable in the back for Freka too. So making this a tough situation, maybe does not want to swap into the Sable either. Absolutely, Metacham can hold its own against the Dark Flying type due to the counters and the Ice Punch. Does land for super effective damage, but this Air Slash on the Mandibuzz has been a game changer for Ares this entire tournament. Yes, not a lot of other trainers running this Air Slash Mandibuzz in the tournament, but it has been a menace for Freka to face in the Winners Finals as well as the Grand Finals, having a lot of answers to Freka's team. Both trainers triggering those charge moves at the same interval, causing a charge move priority event, and it looks like Mandibuzz will go first, but it looks like, oh, excuse me, the Mandachain went first, Mandibuzz will now respond. Yes, now, despite Mandachain having a severe type disadvantage, those neutral counters and super effective ice punches are starting to add up in a matchup that does not look great at the start for Freka, but Freka making things happen. We see these trainers expertly timing their charge attacks, trying to maximize those turn intervals, and he throws the Ice Punch, secures the KO, and he has to be happy that that Mandibuzz is off the field. As Ares conceding that matchup, and now here comes the Sableye, and now here comes the Wall Ring. The Wall Ring with the Shield Advantage is going to start dishing out these Ice Cold Spears or maybe even an Earthquake. Realizing he needs to make up some ground. Oh my goodness, it looks like Freka is going to go for the return. This is going to deal a colossal amount of damage. You know, Freka's thinking, go big or go home, and Freka does not want to go home just yet. He is going to land that return, going unshielded, but still a shield remaining on Aerith's side and going for the hard hitting Earthquake. Earthquake doesn't quite KO that Sableye. It does hang in and get off three more Shadow Claws before being KO'd. Yes, this Walrein does have some energy banks, but it is quite low on health. Let's see how Ares responds. All right, waiting out that timer. In comes the Skarmory, looking for some valuable chip damage. Again, this is not going to deal super effective damage, but it does help set up your other Pokemon for success. Yes, now this is going to be a very interesting match. We got Ares with a Grass Pokemon in the back, going into Skarmory with some energy, but the Trevenant does have a shield remaining. This Shadow Ball is going to hit very, very hard, and we do get the first charge move from Freka coming out. It is going to go shielded. Let's see what... Ares, how Ares responds here. There are a certain number of events that need to happen to make an outcome favorable. And look at this, throwing the single Shadow Claw and then the Shadow Ball. This is gonna devastate this Skarmory. This is looking like a tough spot for Freka to be in. Almost one-shotting that Skarmory with the remaining health and now has the C-Bomb for the ch Metacham. We have a Grass Pokemon going against a Flying Pokemon in the very end here. And it looks like Trevenant might be able to clean up and win Ares, the champion of the Europe International Championships. What an incredible run from Ares, winning 3-1 to one in the Grand Finals, not dropping a single set in the entire tournament. I don't know if anyone has ever done it like Ares did this weekend. What an incredible turn of events. 3-1, to one. Frika, the challenger, trying to defeat this winner's bracket champion could not measure up today, but he came very, very close, played incredibly well, and that grit carried him all the way here, unfortunately unable to flip the bracket and make the magic happen. 
Yes, what an incredible run, an incredible run by Freka as well, only losing to Ares in the entire tournament. An amazing tournament that we had here in the European International Championships. The first time Pokemon Go ever was invited to this tournament, and we have a champion. Ares, congratulations! Let's give a round of applause, everyone. All right, so I have a question for you. What do you think was the most valuable Pokemon that you brought to this tournament? Um, I think Mandibus was really great. Also, Trevenant won me a lot of games. Uh, Registeel was kind of useless for me. I used it uh, like once, but it is, it is bench pressure. So I think my team was really great. And I want to thank everyone who helped me with building in and training with it. That is awesome. Now, would you have any advice for trainers out there? Obviously, this is one of the first tournaments we've ever been to. What would you say to the fans watching in the crowd and those at home who are going to go compete? Uh, I think the best way to play is to practice 6v6 tournaments. I don't play GBL at all. I actually never was a legend. So, um, I'm used to play 6v6 and that's it. I don't know what I'm doing here, how I won, but I won somehow. Well, you did an amazing job. Masterful play with Mandabuzz, with Air Slash, in fact, not Snarl, and Trevenant as well. Thank you all for tuning in at home for the European International Championships. And for all here in the crowd, please give one more round of applause to Air. All right, and we will send it back to you, Caleb and Will.